Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. I'm Chapey from Plumpot. So every once a week, at least, mostly Wednesdays, we create Altium or KiCad PCB tutorials. So if you want to learn about PCB design, you came to the right place. In today's video, we're going to go through uh, making your own Raspberry Pi shield. Uh, this is probably one of the longest videos I've made. Um, so if you watch it totally through, you'll be able to know how to create your own Raspberry Pi Shield with putting components on top of it, creating your own footprints, creating your own schematic, um, importing 3D step files. So it's really taking from the beginning to the end. Um, so yeah, if you want to make your own Raspberry Pi Shield, this video is for you. Uh, enjoy. If you found this helpful, please hit thumbs up, subscribe, and just leave a comment below. Uh, what else you guys need help with? We're here to help you guys with any PCB related or electronics questions you might have. Enjoy. So let's get started. The first thing I did, I just created a project. Uh, it's just an empty sheet and empty PCB. So what we want to create is a board that will go on top of our Raspberry Pi. Yeah, you can see. Uh, so things we have to look out for is we have to make sure the connector is perfectly placed on this 40 pin header. Make sure the board fits nicely. Yeah, no collision with the USB Ethernet. Make sure there's a nice cutout for the uh, display port. And here's a cutout for the camera port. Uh, so if you had to do this yourself, measure it, get the dimensions of the board and then do it yourself, it will take quite a while. But lucky for us, KiCad has this cool feature saying file, new, project from template, and you can actually choose your expansion board. So I've made a video on the Arduino, uh, so please go watch that if you want to know how to make a shield to your Arduino. But now we're going to focus on the Raspberry Pi. So for this we're going to do the expansion, uh, look at part 3. This should work for Pi 4 as well. So we just double click on this, we'll just push OK, save it, and we've got new. So if we open the schematic, it just wants to import some of the headers, and there you can see it's got a 40 pin header for us. It tells us exactly how, what the pins are. You can see how nice is this. They got the dimension for us, the headers in the perfect position, uh, the slot for the camera, slot for display. So if I push Alt 3, and you can see, perfect. Uh, there's some notes, P1 should be fit to reverse of the board. So we should not put pin 1 on top, but at bottom, pin 1 is this connector when we populate ourselves. And then you can see RJ45 USB USB, so they already have it. So what we can do now is put a step file in here and see actually how it looks. A step file of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I'm going to go off of a bit of a tangent here. I want to show how this fits on a Raspberry Pi. But unfortunately in KiCad, I cannot place a 3D body in my PCB. Uh, normally in Altium I can, but I can't place it here. So what I do normally is I go File, Export, and make a step file. This I'm going to use in Fusion 360. So Fusion 360 is just a CAD program. If you're a student, it's free. Uh, you can have, have a year free version as well. So this educational license. Uh, it's just a CAD program. I highly recommend it. It's really nice to use, easy to use once you get a hold of it. So what I want to do is I'm going to import a step file of the Raspberry Pi in here and then import the step file of this PCB just to make sure it fits. And then once it's fitting, we can put the components on and things like that. But let's get started with that. I normally get most of my step files, probably all my step files at GrabCAD community. So it's important for KiCad to make a step file. So when you see there's some cool cars here, and if you click on it, you can see that you can download a step file. That's the file we want. So I searched for Raspberry Pi and I found this. So we're gonna see if this works nicely. You can see I've got a step file. All I do is download the files, just create a, a account and log in, and you can download the files. Now just copy it over where you save it or you ever want to save it. And now we go to our Fusion 360 and we upload it. So wherever you saved it, you can actually just drag it. Wait for it. Click this button here, upload. Just give it some time. Once it's done, you'll see it's uploaded here and you can just drag it to the middle. You first have to save it for some reason. So you can just save it. It actually saves it online. So Fusion 360 is online and your all your information will be here on the left hand side. It's like cloud storage. But it doesn't matter. So we put it on. Wait again a bit. And there's our Raspberry Pi. So what we want to do now is we want to take our file here. Yeah? This board we want to take to Fusion 360. So to do that we just go File, 
export step file. I already did this, it will ask me to replace it, and I'll say yes. So this saves it in the same place where you save your project. I don't remember where I saved it, so I just go file, save, copy as, and I see it's over here, <laughs> I copy it. Then I go to Fusion 360, upload again, select file, just paste that, and I should see a step file here somewhere. Yes, there's a step file. And I upload again, and now we wait again. <laughs> now it's done, and we just drag it like the other one. And let's see where it ends up. Okay, so it ended up at here. You can use these arrows on the left hand side to move it. So on the left hand side here at the browser, you can choose which module you want to go. You can just right click, right click, and you can click move. And then these arrows will pop up and you can use arrows here. And then I'll move my Raspberry Pi. And if I click on the shield, right click, move, I'll move my shield. And I'd rather move my shield now. Okay, enter. It's looking good so far. I'm just going to get used to the buttons again because every CAD program is different rotation. There's a shift, middle, mouse button. And let's try and move it. Right. When in doubt, just push escape. And I move this a bit up. I move it a bit sideways. There we go. So this is just a rough idea if it will work. Uh, I'm not going to line it up perfectly. Where is my arrows? When in doubt, push escape. Arrows, arrows. There you go. So that looks good. Ah, keep pushing the wrong buttons. Let's move it down a bit. How nice does that look, guys? If I look at the top, you can see there's the gap there. The holes are lining up. So this board will be perfect for the Raspberry Pi. So what we're going to do now is put some components on here and make it a board we can actually use. Now that I've got the board, uh, I have to decide what type of sensors I want to put on this board. So I've decided I'm going to put a 128 by 64 OLED display, probably an I2C one, and then I'll add an NFC tag. Um, so I can maybe use a tag, Raspberry Pi can connect to a Wi-Fi and I can get some information, I can maybe turn on some light, lights with some, you never know, uh, connect to the internet of some sort, uh, open my computer with a tag, the sky is the limit. So I am not going to redesign everything myself, I'm going to use modules. So what I normally do is because I want to get a proof of concept out, I would look on the internet. So I found these websites showing how to connect to OLED with the code and stuff. So I'm going to use this as reference. So what I normally like to do is I will take a picture of this and I will make a snippet and then sit, maybe save it somewhere. I'll show you guys now what I mean by this, what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to put it in my schematic so I always have a reference. So if I open it again in 10 years time, I will know what I connected and why I connected it. And I will do the same with my NFC. I've got a nice little tutorial about the NFC, how to connect it with SPI, and I will do the same. Great, so now I saved it, and now I'm just going to put these photos in my schematic. I'm going to say place, image, boom, there we go. So now if I come here next year, in two years time, I can see, okay, it's connected. Pin 1 is connected to 3v3, pin 5 is I2C, and then I'll probably go to pin 5 here, and I'll see it's SEL, and 5 is SEL, so it makes sense, it's perfect. Let's place the other one. Nice. So I like doing this, guys, because it's just nice to have a reference when you look at the schematic. So I will build my circuit next to this. And it's nothing to be ashamed about using the internet as help. We want to build something that we know will work because someone else already did it. We are just changing the form factor and learning about PCB design in a nice, fun, easy way. To place symbols on our PCB, on our schematic, we push the button A and they'll pop up. And you'll see here, you probably don't have any OLDs. You maybe have some. Uh, there I can see some SparkFun ones, but it's not the one I want. And you also don't have probably NFC, um, RFID maybe. So we are going to make the footprints for these components, these two. Don't worry guys, if you don't want to make it yourself, I will share these files with you in the link below in our GitHub. So don't stress too much. Uh, you guys can use this file and make the schematic at home by yourself. So let's make the first one, the I2C OLED display module. Firstly, we can see it's got four pins. Uh, it's I2C, so we've got SCL and SDA. You'll see at the bottom, SCL, SDA, and then we've got 3 volt 3 and ground. We do have a tutorial on how to make footprints. If you want to go watch that, we go in more detail. I'll briefly cover it now. So the first thing to create your own footprint a schematic, we go back to our home page. So this is our schematic, this is our PCB, and this is our home page. We click on symbol editor and you'll see it pop up. And these are all our libraries on the left hand side, all our sections. 
and some we might actually see a plum pot one there we go plum pot so we created some components previously but that's not important now so what we do now is we create a new symbol we're going to put it in our plum pot so i will share this whole plum pot file with you guys our symbol name we're going to call oled uh, 128 times 64 uh, designator is u number of units per package just one and there we go we can move it around we have to make a u question mark guys to annotate that's very important and now we can start creating it so we just create a four pin connector we can make a nice block move it in the corner here you can see all the settings here and now we can place pins and we're gonna place the four pins ground but let's first see where the connections are so let's first see the one we're gonna buy so let's just take this for example so pin one ground two vcc scl so we're going to use this so let's just keep this on the side so pin name is ground pin number is one that is a power power input and then we can just say okay rotate it so it's important that this dot is the connection and now we can do it again pin two is vcc power input as well and then pin 3 is SCL and I'm going to make this bi-directional and then we're going to have a pin name SDA4 and make that bi-directional and that's it guys how easy was that we can change R ah, not that so when we highlight this we can push E or double click and you see full body with background color or something and then it looks like this so this looks a bit better uh, i would just want to make it a bit smaller so i'm going to delete this and just make a new one and then i'll do the same uh, just double click on the line and then fold body with background highlight everything and there we go and just push save now you'll see it's in my plump pot library right there how easy was that so i just took this picture just to make sure this is the one i'm going to buy so one is ground two is vcc three is sel and if we look at what we're going to kind of copy uh, in our design doesn't make sense ground SEL SEA 3.3 perfect 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 you see what I mean so this one had VCC ground VCC was pin 1 but the one that I'm buying that is in real life VCC ground is pin 1 so be very careful looking at the internet and what you get in real life uh, it's your responsibility to check what you're going to buy in real life, what you're going to use in real life. These are only suggestions how to help you connect it and program it. But it's always, always good to double check your work. Now let's make the schematic symbol of the RFID module. So yeah, as you can see here, uh, it's this module we're going to use. And pin 1 is VCC and it carries on until SDA. So you can either have R2C or SPI with this module. Um, so we're going to make the schematic symbol now like we did with the previous one and as we did that we go here we say schematic symbol editor don't worry too much about that and then we'll get to our well-known window and we look for plum pot here on the left hand side you can call it yours whatever you want um, I just made a plum pot library somewhere hopefully I don't know my alphabet there we go plum pot so we just made the NSC no we made the OLED, sorry. We just made the OLED. So now we're going to make a new one, a uh, new symbol. Symbol name, we're going to call it RC522. RC522. We say OK. And there we go. It added it. Remember, we have to put a question mark behind it. So let's go back to our component. You can see all these also have question marks. That has to do with your annotation. So we just move that. And we just do the same. We've got eight pins. We make our nice little box again. Highlight, right click, properties. And then I just fill it. And then we can look at the pins while doing it. Pin 1. Pin name is SDA. That's a more common one. Pin 8. And guys, remember this dot is the connection point. So you want your name on the inside of the symbol and your pin number on the outside. And we just carry on like this. 7 is SCK. Now we just carry on. Let me fast forward. Oh, I did that the wrong way around. Focus, guys. Pin name is SCK. But number seven just like that so let's finish it and there we go we just create our own schematic uh, so pin 8 sda pin 7 sck and then pin 6 is on mosi and miso for sbi uh, 4 is irq 3 is ground reset to vcc so this is perfect so we and it's saved in our plumpod library everything's good now we just have to save it 
So what we're going to do now is make the footprint. So we just made this mask symbol, but we need the footprint to solder our component on. So let's make it for these two, our OLED and our RFID. To make our footprint, we use this footprint editor over here. So you'll see it open a similar thing. I'm not sure if I've got a plump pot one. Yes, I do for the components. So there we go. So we're going to go right click on my plump pot and new footprint. And we're going to call this OLED. And there you can see we've got a plump pot OLED and our reference we're going to make U star. So when we update our footprint this will become a one or two depending how many ICs we have on our board so let's draw our footprint our footprint will need four pads if we look at our connectors we have one two three four so we take a pad and we can just put four of them double click on it to see what the position the size whole size i normally make one millimeter so it just makes it a bit bigger to solder. But then you just have to make sure there's more copper on the edges. You don't make the copper too thin. So you can increase the size by 1.7. There we go. So we make it a bit thicker. This is just a preference. Um, it should work as default. Always check what size your footprint has to be. I know these are just normal headers. So normally about one millimeter and their uh, distance between each other is 2.54. So if you go measure, this is 2.54. And this is 2.54, 2.54. So KiCad already kind, kind of um, sorts it out for you because that's generic distances between pads normally is 2.54 especially with these headers uh, so this is perfect and now what we can do is we can draw a board outline i normally do that on silk layer so we can just draw a line add graphics so the silk you'll see in real life so if i push alt 3 and you'll see it's the white over here so this is how your pcb will look with the four holes what we can actually do now is we can actually place this components we made earlier. I just want to see the pin out. So we can go OLED and there you can see it. So we can add it and you can see pin one is ground. So if I do this, text, we've got ground there. And pin two was VCC. And what was pin three? SCL, SDA, SCL. SDA and that's it so we just make it nicer put it up here and let's save this uh, alt 3 and there you can see so let's try put a 3d step file on this I'm going to download again from GrabCAD I went to my favorite GrabCAD and I saw this let's just make sure it's a step file perfect step file I will download this now. Once I download it, just save it in a place where you know where it is. Uh, don't do what I do where I just put it in my downloads folder and then carry complaints because I'm not organized. Uh, but I know where everything is, so I don't know what the issue is. Now what we can do is we go to properties on top here, footprint properties, 3D settings, and we're going to add this file. Uh, let's find it. Um, I did save it under downloads don't tell carry and there we go okay and now it should be here somewhere i hope there we go we can move it by the left hand side let's first rotate it i'm going the wrong way i think let's go the other way and then let's move it into the picture and there we go 
So now we just made a nice footprint with a 3D step file and we push OK. We save and we go back to our we go back to our symbol editor because now we go back to plum pot and I go back to this. Once I double click on it, you'll see I can add a footprint here at the bottom. So footprint, push there, and then I must go look for plum pot again and then OLED. So what we did now is we actually linked our schematic symbol to our footprint. So we create a schematic symbol and we create a footprint. Now it should all be good and we should actually have a component uh, on our schematic. So this is our schematic. I would first delete this because just to redo the place of components so everything synced again. There we go. I go tools, annotate. So you'll, uh, we should not do question marks. I'll fix it now. Tools, annotate, schematic, annotate. Yeah, so we only want one question mark. I'll just manually fix it now, but you guys can fix it in the symbol editor. And now we go, do we have a U1 here? No, we don't. Now we go tools, update PCB. Now hopefully our footprint should come there. Uh, Reassociate. And there we go. We just made our own footprint. So I'll rotate it, probably something like this. Alt 3, and we should see a symbol. How nice is that, guys? Very cool, very cool. So let's do the next one, and then also put on the PCB, and then we can start get routing. I'm going to do the same now for the RFID tag. Uh, let's just place it so I can have an idea. So what we can do is can we look for plum pot here. We can research it. There we go. And there it is. So I see it also as two question marks. So I think I was wrong with this, guys. I think you must not add a question mark. It automatically, automatically does it. Uh, so only one is required. Tools, annotate schematic, annotate. Great. You'll see there's no footprint, but I just wanted to see uh, what the pins are. One, two, three, four. So we go to the footprint editor and we go to plump bar on the left hand side here. Right click, new footprint, and we call it. Uh, my brain is so bad. RC522, RC522. RC Boom. And see it added to, we only need one. So let's go fix that now. So over here, you don't put a question, you don't put a question mark. So it automatically does it. Save, always save guys, sometimes it crashes. And we do the same, this time we only have eight. So we go one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just move it nicely up. Move the reference away. Make a nice art border again. Put some text. It's always nice to have some text. What was pin eight again? Let's have a look. Uh, pin 8 was SDA. Can I, I'm going to make a snippet and then put it next to me. Then I don't have to keep going here. Just making a snippet so I have on the side so I can carry on without keeping looking, without workout looking. So SDA, SCK, MOSI, MISO, IRQ, ground, reset, and VCC, which is our power. Boom, there we go. So we save it. As always, my favorite GrabCAD has this. So we can choose a simple module. It looks like a nice. It looks fine. It's got doesn't have a step file, so we can't use it. Let's try this one. It has a step file. We can use it. Download. And we just keep doing the same. Save it in a proper place. Don't do what I do. And let's do the same. So we go. Properties, let's add a step file. What I don't like too much is that you can't copy a, a path. I think they should sort that out. That should be here somewhere. Done. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. What have I done? Let's go back. I need to move it. Oh, I found it. See, it looks a bit small, but it does fit. And then we can just 
looks good. Uh, yeah, that looks nice. There we go. Okay, save. And now we have to link it again. So let's go back to our drawing. RC522, double click on it, footprint. Plumpart RC. Okay, perfect. Save, always save. We exit, delete this just to refresh. Now we get the latest and greatest RC tools updates. Ah, sorry. Tools annotates, but we only must get one question mark. So let's not add question marks, guys. Tools update, update, and there we go. We can see we've got a new one. Let's see if we can have space for it. Alt 3 will show. Wow, it's massive. No worries. We'll just turn it this way. Uh, maybe we should swap spaces. So let's turn this this way. And let's turn this there. And now it should be better. There we go. That's manageable. Great. Now let's do the schematic of this. Now we can start making our schematic. So we just created our two components and we got help from the internet what to connect. So pin one is VCC, so that's three volts. So we can just take three volts from our Raspberry Pi. And we push W for wire and we connect it. Ground is normal. I don't always like crisscrossing, but it is what it is. As long as you don't see a dot there, you are, can be happy it won't be connected. So if we go like this, then you can see it's connected. So these two lines are not connected. Copy that with C. Uh, let's just move it a bit out. I like to make sure my VCC is up and my ground is down. And then let's see where we can get VCC, VCL and V. I was good to see So. Over here somewhere should be ask with CSL. There we go. Uh, SEL is over there. And then we need SDA. Look how easy this is, guys. Perfect. Now we do the same here. I need 3 volts 3 again. So copy that. I always have my VCC pointing up and then ground. I know it looks a bit ugly, but it is what it is. Make sure your grounds are all common. So we all have the same grounds and then we can connect. So reset, we connect to pin 22. Nice IRQ we don't need, I think. Yeah, that's not connected. Let's just paste wires here. So SDA is pin 24. So we got SDA to pin 24. Uh, and then we got SCK 23. Yeah, SCK, so that makes sense. And then we've got pin 19, MOSI, which is pin 19. MOSI makes sense. So I'm pretty sure this is fine. And then we've got Pin 21, which is MISO. I like to make everything line up. Now let's see what happened. Now we go tools, update PCB from schematic, reassociate, update. You'll see our rat nest will appear. Now let's start routing. Great. Now that we've created the components, we made the schematic all nice, clean, clear. You can see what is connected, how it's supposed to be connected. Let's start the routing. So it's the rat nest below. What I'll do first is I'll create a copper pore for my ground and VCC. So this just makes it easier to connect everything that's VCC and ground. And then we don't have to worry too much about all the tracks. It's also very good for EMC and all that stuff. But not to worry about that now. We just want to make a Raspberry Pi board. And then we do ground. Great. So on the left hand side you can click here to toggle between it. 
and you should see where ground is it's quite connected like this and this and if you go to three volts that's connected as well so now we don't have to worry too much about this and now we can just look at signals so i always hide this it's just easier to root so i push x to make a track and i will just try to find my way to where it wants to go as you go you'll find out better ways a neater ways to do it uh, but i'm just going to connect it quickly uh, make trying to make sure that i don't have any right angles or anything let's see if i can try to keep everything on top layer doubt it maybe if i really really try see this is ugly so just try to fix it Ah, oh, come on to do that you push d for i don't know for what actually but it does this you can move it so now we can either go around it or we just go to the bottom layer push x and let's just go there no so one's at the top and one is at the bottom how cool is this guys so so cool what's this five volts i don't think you actually have to connect it but it wants to be connected so just connect it um, and that's it guys so we can actually go do a design rule check see what it says run rdc refill unconnected item which one is it and it shows you we have 3v3 disconnected that is before because i created this cut here so my 3v3 if you see what i mean is my 3v3 is the red so when i created a 3v3 track on top here i actually cut my 3v3 and that's not ideal so if i delete this you'll see it should be fine then uh, run rdc refill and now it's only that one so because this is connected through copper you can see copper is connected to three it's not ideal uh, three, three. so let's go try to top so we don't do this so what we can do is we go to the top and we go from here through here through here and there and then we just push b for repo but now the problem is we cut this 3v3 up here you can see what i mean so we make a track and we're cutting the copper plane so we don't want that idea so let's go to the bottom then what happens when you rush through it um, but yeah, I just want to show you guys the principle behind it let's just connect everything and there we go so now it should be fine we didn't cop cut any tracks so all my crowns are connected and all my VCs is connected so the red here is connected throughout and now if I do design rule check everything should be fine no uh, it's just the 5 volts yes zero zero so now we have a board that is connected raspberry pi shield so if we plug that into our pi we should be able to display something and have a rfid tag that works with it so guys look at the tutorials below and you can be able to program it i'll put a link at the tutorials that we used yes yeah, these ones here so you guys can just go through it and build it and that's it guys so we just went through this whole video uh from the beginning how to make your own raspberry Pi shield how to import components how to make your own footprints how to make your own schematics it was really a detailed video it's probably the most detailed one i have done so far uh, so let me know in the comments if it's too much detail should i break it up like i normally do um, if you watch this far well done uh, leave leave a comment below below saying i watched until the end just quite interested because i don't think many of you guys make it to this spot so i can actually say whatever i want in this spot because i think only two percent of the people get to the spot 
if you have <laughs> thanks a lot i appreciate it uh as always guys have a fantastic day fantastic week wherever in the world uh please join our discord channel if you ever need help with anything that is the easiest way for me to personally help you guys with questions and other people also on there uh, that can help that knows actually more than me other than that see you guys next week for another video and probably this weekend i'll sneak peek a chessboard video out uh, let's see i'm working on that smart chessboard so if you watch till this end you know even more about that <laughs> cheers guys bye